Hi there, this is Dennis Smith, uh, firefighter retired, Engine 82, other companies, FDNY, I love to say that. Anyway, I just want to wish you a St. Patrick's Day joy, a little message that says, I hope you have a good day and a safe day, and that you have a good time, but that you, um, you know, rem I suppose the best advice ever is to remember your parents and what they taught you on St. Patrick's Day, right? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, and I also want to say good meal a maragut, which is Irish for 100 million uh, thank yous for uh, all the support you've given me over the years. Uh, it really is appreciated, and in fact, it keeps the engine chugging and uh, gets me to get the wagons over the mountains. So, thank you. Uh, you know, when I was a young firefighter in, in Engine 82, uh, I was the union leader there. I was the union delegate for my company for a few years, and I loved that job. And we had a president then named Mickey May, who was a big Irishman, and he was a Golden Gloves champion. He was a great firefighter. And a very tough guy. I mean, it's sort of epitome of a labor union, you know. Uh, if you didn't go along with him, he'd take this, <laughs> he'd take a halligan out of his inside jacket pocket and he'd throw it on the table and said, and say, uh, you better rethink what you just said. He was that kind of guy, very intimidating, but a good guy. Anyway, I belonged to the Democratic Party in those years. And why not? You know, I was a young firefighter, I was a union delegate, I was a Catholic, I was a, uh, a person who was very conscious of the needs of the poor, especially working in the neighborhoods that I worked in, in the South Bronx. And I felt, um, I felt then a real kinship with poor people, and, uh, and that I had a responsibility, that we all had a responsibility to care for them. Well, I still feel pretty much the same thing, I, and uh, uh, the only thing is that, and I'm guessing that my grandchildren will probably be Democrats too as they get uh, into voting age, young, and you know, what is the saying that if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're young and you're not a Democrat, shame on you, and if you're over 30 and you're still a Democrat, uh, shame on you. So. Uh, it makes sense when you think about it. Uh, and then as I got older, I recognized that in, in the, the citizenship of the United States comes a whole series of responsibilities. Not only the responsibilities to care for other citizens who are in need, I think we always have that responsibility, but to, but to, but to keep adding on to entitlements, you recognize as you get older, just cost a lot of money, and it has put the country now in uh, its $19 trillion debt. And actually, if you consider all the entitlements, the debt is about a trillion dollars, and it's your children and grandchildren who are going to pay that. Um, except if we change our style of government. And this is why uh, I want to talk to you for a moment about uh, Donald Trump. You know, I knew, one of the smartest people in the world was a guy named uh, William F. Buckley, and he founded National Review magazine. And I knew Bill Buckley, not really well, but I knew him enough first name basis. And I, I've, I went to lunch with him actually a couple of times, and uh, just he and I, and a guy named Jim McFadden. And uh, I really respected him. What a mind he had. It was almost as if he thought in Latin, you know, he was that smart. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, if he were alive today as the founder of National Review magazine, I think that he would call up Rick Lowry, who was the current editor of uh, National Review, and tell him to back off Donald Trump. Because what Rick Lowry is... And I see him every time he's on television. He just derides Donald Trump terribly. And he doesn't recognize at all in, in his mind, in the balances of his mind, 
that millions and millions and millions of people have already voted for Donald Trump. And for him to diminish Donald Trump in this way is, in fact, diminishing the American people. And so he should recognize that, but he does not. So maybe somebody will send this to him, and he will see it, and, and he will, because people I'm talking to have been in burning buildings. You know, these are people who have served their country in their own way, in their own communities. And, and when you go into a burning building, it gives you a certain kind of badge. And that you can say uh, uh, pretty much anything you want to, if you say it responsibly, because people have to bring the, uh, the, the idea of firefighting to mind and to bring a certain kind of respect to that. So, uh, but I've been thinking a lot about about the Republicans on the Republican side. I don't want to endorse anybody, but I certainly want to say, although I don't know why I wouldn't endorse anybody, I don't know you know, what it really means, except that I think that you should all make a choice, whatever choice is in your, you know, that balance between your mind and your heart. And uh, uh, so I liked Rubio a lot. I thought he was a sharp guy. I, uh, you know, I, he does have a big future in politics if he doesn't just despair and give it all up. And, uh, and uh, I like Ted Cruz, too. In fact, I was leaning toward Ted, Ted Cruz because he has this sort of, you know, he practiced before the Supreme Court nine times, and he's got this sort of very, you know, big uh, intellect, uh, and he is able to construct a, a, um, an intelligent and a, an attractive sentence, uh, which is something Donald Trump always has trouble with. But still, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that Donald Trump actually represents my views more than the rest of them. And I'll tell you why. I think we have an opportunity in the United States of America to make such a significant change. And here's what brought me to, to, to thinking this, that we better do it now because we'll never get this chance again. Uh, when you look at what happened in... Uh, in uh, Donald Trump's Chicago speech, the one that was canceled, when you saw all those protesters and those little scuffles that, you know, speaking of St. Patrick's Day, it was like a St. Patrick's Day fireman's party, you know, <laughs> people pushing each other around. But it was um, uh, reported by the press. 94% of the press blamed those scuffles on Donald Trump, on Donald Trump, not on the people who came there just to make trouble. And, and, and I said, you know, I really have had it with the press. And then I remembered that just a couple of weeks ago, this, this uh, soldier, Marine, was, uh, was approached in McDonald's by uh, three people who were uh, uh, a member of some group. I don't know the group, but they said, uh, they said, uh, uh, do you support Black Lives Matter? And the guy didn't finish his meal. He knew he could see that he was in trouble with these three guys. They were looking to start something. So he left McDonald's. Anyway, they followed these three guys, followed him outside, and they beat him up almost to a critical condition. He was in the hospital for days, all bandaged up, blood everywhere. And it was a terrible, terrible thing. And it was a racial crime. There was no doubt about it. But the New York Times didn't even report it. They did not report that this guy who had spent time over in uh, um, Afghanistan, uh, serving his country, putting his life at risk, and he gets beaten up by three, you know, brutal thugs uh, in this way. And the New York Times did not write a sentence about it. Well... That's really what made me think that I have to vote for Donald Trump. I'll tell you why. Because Donald Trump, of anybody, any of these politicians, is the only guy who I know who can tell the New York Times to go to hell and not lose a minute's sleep over it. We know whether tomorrow they'll say something nice about him or something terrible about him. He'll put them in their place, in their glorified, you know, hallowed, uh, liberal uh, uh, center of the world. And, you know, I'm with Donald Trump. The hell with them. Uh, they don't need the support of the American people. They don't have the support of the American people. They have the support of this small group 
uh, although it's a great newspaper, I got to say, say, you know, if you go into it, you could read it for hours and hours because it's so comprehensive. But they're always single-minded. They hate conservatives. They just hate them. And 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 they're like the twin brother of the Washington Post and the Boston Globe and the Los Angeles Times. You know, they're all pretty much the same. And so uh, they have to be reformed. They have to look at themselves or they're going out of business. You know, because the American people, all these people who are voting for Trump and for, for Cruz and who voted for Rubio and, and Kasich, um, Kasich really should get out of this race, by the way. He's serving nobody by in it, being in it except himself. And I like him. He's, a, you know, he's also got a, a fine mind and he's a doer. And he's a great constructive thinker, but he's he's going nowhere in this race except dividing more between Cruz and Trump. Anyway, so the 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 Times and the Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times, they don't like Trump, they don't like Cruz, they don't like anybody who's a, a conservative mind about any subject. They want you to be progressive. They want you to be atheist. They want you to be unthinking and uncritical in terms of judging other people. You know, I didn't bring my children up like that. When you bring your children up, you bring them up to think about uh, 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 how to discern uh, between people with good character and people with, you know, questionable character. And that's the way it ought to be. So that's enough lecture for the day. It was just my St. Patrick's Day uh, uh, tirade, maybe. I don't know. I hope you think so. And if anything, if it's like Donald Trump, I'm for that, actually. And so not to forget St. Patrick's Day, I'll end with this. Okay, Erin Gobra. <laughs>